Having already looked at two noise-based techniques to increase the performance of trading strategies, asset filtering and time frame filtering, today I turn my attention to the third and final technique that I'll be covering in this series, instantaneous noise filtering. This technique monitors what the current noise conditions are for an asset at the time of a potential trade open and then either allows or disallows the trade depending on whether those conditions are favourable for the type of strategy being traded. Once again, the magnitude of potential improvements is something that can't be ignored. Back in a moment after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Using instantaneous noise filtering has an advantage over asset filtering. This is because the technique doesn't just look at the average noise characteristics of each asset. Noise always fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, at other times it's lower. This technique takes advantage of that, which means that you can trade a larger universe of assets in your portfolio, but only when each asset is exhibiting the noise characteristics that are suited to the strategy being traded. Let's take a look. These are the three techniques that we'll be looking at as part of this series. Asset filtering, time frame filtering, both of which we've already looked at, and now we turn our attention to instantaneous noise filtering and specifically at the results that this technique can provide. So let's first of all just distinguish between what we mean by asset filtering and instantaneous filtering. With asset filtering that we've already studied the results for, this is where you effectively choose the assets that you're going to trade based on their average noise characteristics. And specifically, you choose those assets that have noise characteristics that are suited to the trading strategy you're using. And then all other symbols simply don't get traded. But when using instantaneous filtering, this is different. Here, we can trade a much wider range of assets, but only when those assets are experiencing the noise conditions that we require. At all other times, trading won't be allowed. Now, the strategy that I'll be using for this brief study is identical to the strategy that we've seen in the previous two episodes, so I'm not going to cover the details of that again. But the specific objectives of this particular study is to compare trading 28 currency pairs with no filtering at all against trading them using instantaneous noise filtering. And just like the previous two episodes, I'll be sticking with the efficiency ratio as the measure of noise to inform this technique. And just like the previous two studies, we're going to start from exactly the same baseline. And this is trading the mean reversion strategy on all 28 pairs with no filtering. And as a reminder, this strategy produces just over 12,000 trades. And the performance measure I'm using is the compound annual growth rate over mean drawdown. And it scores just 0.25. So let's now take a look at the effect on the equity curve when instead of allowing all trades to open at all times for every signal, this time we measure the noise just before the trade is opened and decide whether it will be allowed or disallowed. And this is the effect. So in terms of metrics, we've now reduced 
the number of trades from 12,500 to just under 7,500. And the reason is because just over 5,000 of those trades were not allowed to open because the noise conditions were not suitable at that time. And visually, you can see that this has had a positive impact on the equity curve. But measuring that more precisely with our performance metric, we can see that this has increased significantly from 0.25 up to 1.47. And viewing these side by side, we can see that this is the improvement. But I thought it would be interesting not just to look at the improvement of using instantaneous noise filtering, but also to compare this to the improvements we saw when we used the first technique, asset filtering. So if we replace the baseline chart on the left with the results we initially obtained for asset filtering, this is the comparison. And as you can see, by simply choosing the eight currency pairs that are best suited to this strategy on average appears to perform better than by using instantaneous filtering. And we have a CAGR over mean drawdown of 1.55 compared to 1.47. But let's not be too hasty with our decision here, because if we look at the number of trades, we can see there's a significant difference. By only trading the eight most noisy assets out of the total of 28 currency pairs, we only get just over 3,000 trades. However, using instantaneous noise filtering, we get over 7,000. And the number of trades we get here is purely determined by the level at which we set our threshold of noise measurement. And if instead we chose to be much more selective about which trades we took and which we didn't, by increasing that threshold, that would have the effect of decreasing the number of trades that were taken here on the right, and we'd see an improvement in the results, because we'd be removing those trades that were only slightly suitable to the trading strategy. But the main point here is that using both of these techniques produces a significant improvement in the results when used against this particular strategy. Now, so far, you'll have noticed that all of our research has been focused around the use of the efficiency ratio as the measure of noise. But of course, previously in other episodes, we've also looked at the concepts and principles of an alternative technique called price density. And so how would this compare to the use of the efficiency ratio? Well, that's going to be the subject of the next two episodes. And we're going to compare these results that we've already obtained in this and the previous two episodes directly with the results when using price density instead. So be sure to tune in for that episode. If it's already available, then you'll see that in a link right here. But now, until next time, trade wise, trade safe.